shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on and magnify him today. Come on and magnify him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah, because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for being a believer on today. Anybody thank, for, thank you for being a Holy Ghost believer on today? Anybody believe in Jesus Christ? He's the giver of all life. Hallelujah. I thank God for heaven. He came down. Hallelujah. Oh, what joy I found. Hallelujah. And I thank God for being a believer on today. Hallelujah. That's why the song says, yes, I'm a believer. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on, Sopranos. Say yes.
I love you, Lord. 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 Yes, I do. I love you, Lord. love the Lord today. Hallelujah. I love him more than anything. Do you love him more than anything today? Yes, God. Let's sing, I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. you love him say I love you Jesus oh come on say I love you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we come to magnify his name anybody is glad and excited about what God is doing in your life hallelujah hallelujah I should have been dead sleeping in my grave but look at you on today you're in the house of the Lord hallelujah I didn't come for no form of fashion I just came to give God glory because he's been so good. How good? Mm, good. How good? Mm, good. How good? Mm, good. I don't even have words to describe it on today. All I can say that God has been good to me. Do I have a witness on today? Do I have a witness on today? Look, listen here. I'm not just here just to shout in the, I'm in the mic. I'm here because God, hallelujah, has granted me mercy. He's granted me grace. He's granted me peace. And I'm thankful for it on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Hallelujah. And I'm glad, hallelujah, of what God is getting ready to do in all of our lives. Hallelujah. Listen, we came to give thanks on today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. So we want everybody to stand if that are able to stand hallelujah as we give thanks hallelujah yes God
to be praised. If you're just happy to be here, I'm going to let you just give God one more praise. <laughs> Without saying your prayer request out loud, how many of you have a prayer request on this morning? Yeah, I know I do. Yeah. Put it on your mind. All right? And let's go give it to Jesus. Father God, we love you this morning. We magnify you. We glorify you. We first thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. Ah, we're clothed in our right state of mind, the use and activity of our limbs. You didn't allow the deaf angel to come in and take us out this morning. That means we have a purpose for this day that you have created. And in spite of how we feel and in spite of, ah, of what we're going through this morning, we command our body to praise God in his sanctuary. In spite of the aches and the pains, in spite of the burdens that we might be bearing on this morning, we still come to praise you. Because there's somebody down the street in the hospital that's tied down to the bed with wires and everything attached to them with oxygen tanks. And here we are in your sanctuary. Oh God, we can praise you. Somebody was just hit by a car this morning. Here we are, we pulled into the parking lot, got out the car and came into the sanctuary. Somebody lost their mind this morning. But here we are in the land of the living, in the house of refuge. That's enough to praise you. And God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yeah, we feel good this morning. The sun is shining this morning. Oh, God, and we thank you. And we have a request Oh, God, this morning that we need you to work out. Some need healing. Some need a financial breakthrough. Some need their loved ones to be saved. Somebody need a miracle. Somebody need a blessing. But whatever it is, we take this time right now to praise you for working it out. Yeah. We believe that you're the God of the breakthrough. We believe that you're the God that can answer this prayer request. We believe that you're the God that can heal. We believe that you're the God that can set free. So come in refuge this morning. Oh God, with your power and your demonstration, with your Holy Spirit and move in this sanctuary. Break up the foul ground. Destroy the yoke of the enemy. Oh God, send the enemy on the run this morning. Save somebody. Deliver somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Send the blessing to that situation. Oh God, we claim healing now. Send forth healing. Strengthen the mothers of Zion. Remember every marriage, every young person. Oh God, remember the shepherd of the house. Oh God, bless him on this morning. Remember everybody that had a symbol here together. Every home that's represented here on this morning. Oh, God bless us as only you can. Remember, oh God, the choir. Remember the musicians. Let a praise of worship break out this morning. Let a praise of worship break out this morning. Let a praise of worship break out this morning. Take us out of the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> Get your way this morning. Have your way this morning. Oh, God, we seal the prayer by saying, in the name of Jesus, it's done. And if you believe God has answered your request, then put something on it. Put something on it this morning. Hey. Put something on it. Put something on it. Hey. Come on, open your mouth. You need it. I need it. Put something on it this morning. Yeah. 
there. Go ahead, put it. Put a praise on it. Yeah, Psalms 23, 5 and 6 says, uh, let's, let's let the devil know that God gonna work this out this morning. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what the word says. Let's 
see. Just try him. Try him. Try him. Try him. His word says, I am healed. His word says, I am delivered. His word says, I am free. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Ain't no change holding me. Ain't no change holding me. I am free. I am free. Stretch out. Stretch out. Lean on him. Lean on him. Lean on him. Lean on him. Lean. Stretch. Lean. Stretch. Lean. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Put your hands together. Somebody's still in the building. Don't believe what God can do. But I came to tell you that there is no secret to what God can do. What he done for Sal, he'll do it for you. But you got to learn to stretch. Learn to stretch. Learn to stretch. And flex your spiritual muscles. Stretch out to Jesus. Stretch out to Jesus. Stretch out to Jesus, y'all. 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 Y'all gonna help us sing the song this morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Not your mind. Not your freak. But stretch out to it. Stretch out to him. He's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix it. Trouble in my way. Gotta cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. Gotta cry sometimes. Pain in my body. But I know G. Pain in my body. But I know G. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. They that wait upon the Lord. They'll renew, renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like these. They'll run and not get with. They'll walk and not rest. Stretch out, stretch out, stretch out, stretch out, stretch out. Hold on. Jesus will fix it. 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 Jesus will fix Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Praise him. Anything. Praise him. Anything. Praise him before you see it. Praise him! 
Jesus will fix you. Jesus will fix you. Jesus will fix you. Jesus will fix you. Jesus will fix it when can't nobody else fix it our faith says that Jesus will fix it hallelujah when nothing else can turn it around my faith says that Jesus can turn it around Jesus can fix it hallelujah 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 that's why I got to give him a praise because I know, even if you don't know, that Jesus can fix it. So I got to give him the praise. I got to give him the glory. I got to give him the honor because I know. Turn it around. Turn it around. Jesus can fix it. Turn it around. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Jesus can fix it. Jesus can turn it around. He can turn it around. It might look like this today, but he can turn it around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn it around, Jesus. Turn it around. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 We're excited today because... The Ministry of Refuge Temple is, 
has the opportunity through the great leadership of our pastor, hallelujah, to elevate two of our very own, hallelujah, this convocation. Hallelujah. These two young men, we all know, we all love. They already have a name for themselves and great respect. God has already given them great ministries. But today, for the first time on a Sunday morning in Refuge Temple, Columbia, you get to hear each one of them break bread from the word of God as delivering the message from God. Come on and give God a praise for our two speakers on this morning. Hallelujah. Before we go forward, hallelujah, we want to acknowledge the presence of two visiting churches. We see members from two of our churches. And number one, obviously, Rock Hill, Columbia, Rock, Rock Hill, Refuge Temple, Rock Hill. Thank God for y'all showing up. There's refuge at the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we got Triumphant Church all the way down from St. Stephen's under the leadership of Elder Singleton over here. Come to fellowship with us this morning. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I want to introduce our first speaker for the morning in the person of uh, youth pastor, Minister, Minister Chris Breeden. Amen. This is not a spectator sport. As our ministers come to bring forth the word of God, we pray for them. We encourage them. We push them. And we celebrate the word of God, not the style. We celebrate the word of God as it is, as it is delivered to the people of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask Minister Chris Breeden to come forth in his own way in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you love the Lord, clap your hands on this morning. We honor the Lord Jesus Christ, just happy to be in the land of the living, just happy to be alive. And to the shepherd of our house, let's thank God for our pastor, Bishop Reed. And to all of you that are here, we speak God's blessings upon you real quick because we want to bless you and we want to leave room for our brother in Christ to wrap this thing up and to minister to you all. Philippians chapter 1, and let's go to verse 6. It says, being confident of this very one, very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you, yeah, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of who? Jesus Christ. Lord, bless your word. Your manservant has reported to duty. Now bless me. Use me how you see fit. I'm here to please you. You get the glory. You high flesh behind Calvary, allow this word to fall on good ground that the people of God can hide it in their heart and rejoice on it for the rest of their life to come. I seal the prayer by saying in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm no stranger to you all. You all know who I am. Uh, I'm just a different style of preacher. And I don't change it for nobody. Mother just said, do you? And that's what I'm going to do this morning. Uh, I can't fit in. And that's because God didn't make me that way. And so I come in the style that God has given me. All right. When we look at this scripture, we're dealing with the writer, Apostle Paul. And he's writing at this time. Some say he's in jail or he's even experiencing house arrest. <laughs> but he has the nerve to take the pen and write to the church and say, listen, chill out. God got this. And he has it so much that what he started in you, he's going to finish it. So there's no need for you to sweat, no need for you to worry about it. He has this all in control. And so when the Lord deals with me, he deals with me, Bishop Reed, in illustrations. And so 
I got that this morning for you all to help you understand it. And some of you might say, oh, well, this is not Sunday school. This is not children's church. I know, but I want to help you put enough in here so that way when you go out there, you're able to fight off what's out there so that when you come back in here next Sunday, you're not empty. Uh, yeah. And so the Holy Spirit said, go to Walmart. Oh, Jesus, you want me to go to Walmart? Okay, I'll go to Walmart. Go down the aisle where there's the soap. It's okay. All right. And carrying what I thought he was going to have me to pick up, the container wasn't there. So I said, oh, okay, that must have been flesh. So this wasn't from God. So he said, step back. That's what I want you to use. Y'all will get it. You will get it. He that begun a good work in you, complete it. Two containers made by the same company. Same plastic, but anybody that can see, sees that there's two different sizes. Uh-huh. Okay. This container cannot hold what's inside this container. It will overflow. And this container is big enough to hold this well, it's in this container, but it'll be half full or maybe empty. And so God want us to understand this morning by the scripture I read, the process of God's will. For the next few seconds, that's what I want to talk about. The process of God's will. I personally believe the process with us starts with salvation. Let me explain that to you. Salvation is that when one, what, receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. Y'all know it's speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God. Do what? Uh-huh. You're baptized in the name of what? Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of what? Your sins. Oh, y'all got it. All right. And so I believe that when you start the process of salvation, there's also the process of God's will begin to work in your life. All right? He has to, what, fill you in order for salvation to take place. Now, sometime you're witness to, sometime you're brought here by the Spirit of God, but you don't have what truly is his until you are filled with his Holy Spirit. Yeah. You cannot operate, uh-oh, under the Spirit of God unless you're filled with his presence. And I strongly believe that sometime now in church, we're doing a whole lot of operation, but it's not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, stretch out, stretch out, stretch out, stretch out. The purpose of this liquid is to go inside of the container. You and I both know that if you had to purchase this, you would not buy it if the liquid was draining on the outside of it. You will leave it there and go on. You know how we do. We don't take the first container, Alexis. We move it to the side and we reach back and we get the third and fourth one. <laughs> I don't know where we came up with that method. <laughs> and, and, and then I noticed, Bishop, that Johnson & Johnson is so smart that they got a little seal on here. Hey, God help us this morning. That just in case you want to break it and smell it and see how it smells, the next person knows not to buy it because the seal was broken. And then they're so smart because some of us know we're going to break that seal and try to smell it. There's another seal on top of it. 
that you have to lift it off and peel it back. That's just to protect the product, the process of God's will. Amen. Now, you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you actually remember the day God filled you? That didn't sound enough confidence. Do you remember the day that God took the sins out of your life? He changed your taste bud. He destroyed the work of the enemy. You came in church all dressed good and looking nice and you walked out somebody might have helped you to the car you didn't worry how your hair looked you didn't care about the cares of life all you knew is that you were filled with the gift of the holy ghost the world looked so good to you everything was nice to you and you didn't mind you were just happy that you had the presence of god in your life do you remember that day do you remember do you remember all the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free? I looked at my hands and they were new. Looked at my feet and they were too. The old me, but something new on the inside. Yeah. Same eyes, same stomach. but something new on the inside. It was so new that when I went back to school, people saw the difference. Eh? It was so new, uh-oh, <laughs> that it didn't matter who was preaching on Sunday morning. I just wanted to hear the word of God. <laughs> it didn't matter who was singing, and now, because if some of you would have knew this was going on this morning, you told yourself, I would have stayed home. I came here to hear Bishop read the process of God's will. Let me speed up. So, same container, different sizes. Same purpose. When Bishop Reed got up and announced to the church that I was becoming an elder, this dude didn't even come talk to me. So when you heard it, I heard it. I'm sitting there surprised just like you are. And I got an attitude. I got an attitude. Where he come? He didn't have enough nerve to come and talk to me and get my permission. Who said I want to be an elder in this church anyway? Uh, uh, and I started running my mouth. Uh, listen, y'all, I don't I don't have I don't have time to hide nothing. I just don't because God sees all and he hears all. And, and I, I don't know why we got this mind frame that we got to please man and hide things from man. When we got somebody sitting upstairs that see everything we do 24-7. And so I start complaining. And then here comes my pastor with his cool self one day. I mean, just breeze right past me. He said, if you're not going to do it, just shut up in, his, in that way, you know. In his own little way. Just be quiet about it. It's not that I did not want to do it. It was the process of that I had to make sure that I was able to accept what was about to come my way. The problem with the majority of us in the church we want to do the big work, but we can only hold. Uh, uh, you want the title, you want the parking space,
face. You want your name up there. You want your picture on the flyer. But you only have this. And what you're trying to do requires this. Sit down and chill for a second. Learn for a second. Go talk to the mothers for a second. Go talk to the deacons for a second. And, and so we're there. And because of this generation, hey, you know, it's true. If you don't speed them along, they get a little attitude. Preach youth pastor. Well, I can go down the street where they let me do that at. Well, I, I, I can become a bishop in 24 hours if I click on the ad on Facebook and the certificate will come in the mail the next day. The process is there. But the God process is different from our process. Yeah. And God's process calls for a little bit of tribulation. A little bit of persecution. Huh? Yeah. It comes with a little bit of faith. It comes with being talked about for the name's sake. Not because something you conjured up, but something for the name's sake. And that's what Paul was experiencing. I'm going to tell myself, I've been in jail. And I didn't take no time to write no letter <laughs> to encourage nobody else. That cell door closed and it felt like I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I got on that nerve so much I was buzzing. Breathing, what do you want? I said, I can't breathe in here. And she said, the same air that's in there is out here. I said, well, let me see for myself. Let me out. When you become unfamiliar or when you become put in a strange situation, that's the opportunity for God to work his miracles. Hmm. You ever been down to your last dime? Sister Harris sung it this morning, stretch out. Baby near Pierre Strews, light bill due, waiting on your next paycheck, and God steps in. Yeah. Oh, you ever been sick in your body? Yeah, yes, sir. And you lay in there, you're moaning and groaning, and then here comes the Holy Spirit, touches you and heals you. You ever just felt like throwing in the towel? I'm tired of this, <laughs> tired of that church, tired of them, and God throws it right back at you. The process. The process. And so God wants us to know when I was studying and when I was getting his permission, Lord, should I go forth? Should I allow the title to be put upon me? Because that's just what it is in some cases. You're not doing the work, it's just a title. <laughs> then I was pushed some more, Dean McQueen, President McQueen. <laughs> well, you're the vice president, you got two more years of Congress, you gonna run for president? I said, oh God, come on. Then personal things in my life, and trials and tribulations. I found myself overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. And the reason.
reason I found myself overwhelmed is because I was not looking at the source of the process. I felt I had to live up to the standards of you all. Ah, uh, yeah. If I mess up, I got to hear Kill's mouth and Tracy's mouth. Oh, God, and that's a mouth to hear. <laughs> Shalene going to call and say, Bishop wants to see me. And so it would give us a burden. Couldn't sleep at night. I mean, this was going on for a minute, tossing and turning. And then the Lord was waking me up. Waking me up. Two, three o'clock in the morning. Couldn't go back to sleep. Pressure and tribulations and things that I thought, uh oh, that I ran and got away of. That old Chris knocked. Don't you know the process of growing in God? When God brings you out of something, Satan just don't sit there and watch and let you go on. You know what he does, refuge? He go talks to his boys and he say, you know what? They think they got it all together. Go get seven of his old self. Go get seven of what he used to do. And let's go back and visit him. <laughs> you want to know if you're growing when your past doesn't affect the process that God is bringing you through now. He that begun a good work in you. to rise up ah oh, I could have got away with some things how I'm going to tell the young people live right if you ain't living right <laughs> how I'm going to tell y'all to resist and I ain't resisting And so, to sum it up, laying there and I'm seeking God. And the Lord says, Chris, you're looking at the beginning. This is going to help you. You're looking at the beginning. And if you look at your beginning, that was a messed up beginning. It was filthy. I even ask God sometimes, you see me? But it was corrupt. But that's what God does. Uh, he comes in a corrupt situation. In a messed up person. And then he cleans them for his glory and then he puts them to work but it's all in the what process and so he says you're looking at the beginning and that's what we do sometime with each other we look at where we met you at we look at where we saw you at. We look at where we know you've been at. And then we stop the process. Man, woman, me, you, I try to stop the process on each other. Oh God, shame on us. 
Shame on, I preach to myself. How many young people you try to stop the process on? Because you was looking at the beginning when the Holy Spirit looks at the completion. If God looked at the beginning, he would have never saved us. But he takes the whole process and he puts it together and he tells us, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to complete it. But you got to be willing enough to let me do it. Get out of yourself. Give him a yes. Leave the situation alone. Last thing, a founder of this church, Bishop Bottom, who I love dearly and, oh God, he had to deal with Chris a whole lot. He had to. Thank God for it. Sitting right there, he was anointing, getting ready to anoint. And the Holy Spirit said, go stand behind him. You want me to go stand behind him while he anoint? No. I'm not doing it. Pushed me. Stood behind him. I was <laughs> nervous. Because any of you all know, there's a difference between Pastor Bonner and William Lee. And so that night it was Pastor Bonner. I stood behind him. and He didn't say nothing. Now, I'm not throwing off, so get out of your flesh. What I'm about to say, don't even get in your flesh. This is a learning process. So, months went on and I stood behind him. The process of God's will. The process of God was salvation. The process of God was sanctification. The process of God was growing. Bishop, one anointing service, he walked in and grabbed the mic. He said to the congregation, I believe I found someone that can help me around the altar. And the man came and stood and worked with him that night. My heart was crushed. Because I said to God, you told me to stand behind. Now you have me looking stupid. In the eyesight of people. Here we go again. The process of God or the process of people. I went home and I cried. Because I felt that my work was now done with. Your work? Yeah, my work. I was here and I wanted this. Next anointing service, young man, man was there working with him. I continued to serve as ace of the pastor. My president sitting back there. Sister Melissa went to class, did what I had to do, went to prayer, did all that. But I was upset because I did not understand the process. Of what was going on. And in the middle of it, God was trying to get me to realize if I start it, I'll finish it. And here you are catching an attitude with me, God, that can snatch the breath out of your body. All because you're not standing behind William Lee? Get over it. Next anointing service. The man was gone. Holy Spirit said, 
get back in your position. And I stayed in that position until the Lord called my father in the gospel. Well, Chris, what are you trying to say? No matter what comes your way, no matter what have to happen for you to grow in your process with God, stand still, pray, be quiet about it. God will work this thing out. The second you and I Try to start figuring it out for yourself. Getting on the phone, calling this one and that one. Trying to put the own process together. We mess up the whole house. We mess up the whole house. Yeah, we can't shout off of that. Because you have to chill and realize that sometimes the process of God is going to make you look like you don't know what you're doing. That's where the trust comes in at. And all thy ways of what? Acknowledge him. And he'll do what? He'll direct your path. He that begun a good work in you, he's going to finish it. On a serious note, let him finish it. And so on today, when the altar call is called, if you know that the process of God in your life has come to a stop, make your way here. Hmm? When the time comes, make your way here. When you're dealing with the process of God, you ought not to care what people think. Because you get one chance at this. And when God comes, and if your process is not where it's supposed to be, Father God, we thank you. There's two of us in church on this morning. There's one of us that's filled up with your Holy Spirit and we understand the process. And there might be one of us, oh God, that is struggling with the process of your will in our lives. You have been kind because you've been patient with us. Even when we wanted to go astray, you didn't allow us. Penetrate the hearts now of everybody in here that needs to be filled with the anointing and the spirit of the living God. hearts now somebody needs salvation this morning my God somebody needs it might be sitting next to somebody or it might be us don't let self get in the way I don't care how old we have been in, or how long we have been in church. You're speaking to refuge. That the process of God has to be the will for this house. So on this morning, find us wherever we are. And complete the process. Allow the work to start again, Jesus, so that when you return, everything will be well. Let's have a corporate praise, not to identify who's ever weak, 
but in everything that hath breath, praise him. Uh, let everything. Everybody that wants to grow. Everybody that wants more of Jesus. Everybody that needs more of him. Let's have a corporate worship. You might not even need it, but the person next to you might. Let's have a worship worship. Let's intercede for our loved ones. Our children, our nieces, our nephews. Lord, we want to be able to hold your glory. Yeah. It's the process. So I guarantee you the next time you go see Johnson and Johnson, you're going to remember this. And it's going to take you back that he that begun a good work, he's going to perform it in me. So don't stop it. Just turn to your neighbor and say, don't stop the process. Come on, put your hands together. How many of us know God do have a process? He got a process of picking us up, turning us around, placing our feet on a solid ground. God has a process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not going to belabor the moment. We still have another speaker, but we thank God for that message from the word of God from our, our youth pastor, minister, Chris Breen. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Next voice you will hear bringing the word of God is going to be that of Xavier Neal. Hallelujah. After one selection from the choir, receive them both by saying amen. Amen. Wasn't that a word on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all can do better than that. We were fed on the word of them today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say holy. holy. Somebody say righteous. righteous. Somebody say awesome. awesome. Somebody say faithful. faithful. Somebody say healer. healer. Somebody say savior. savior. And then somebody say all that. That's what I call him on today, hallelujah. We call him holy, we call him faithful, we call him righteous. holy you are so holy to me I call you holy your name is holy holy you are and holy you be. it's okay to put your hands together I'll sing that one more time I call you holy your name is holy you are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Oh, I call you holy.
is awesome. You are so awesome. Healing to you on today. Do I have a witness? Whoa, I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are. And healer. Yeah. today. Great and mighty is our God. He is a great God. Great and mighty is our God. Do I have a witness to say that? Help me say it. Great and mighty is our God. Great Refuge, you can help us sing great and great and mighty is our God. One more time, one more time, great and mighty. Great and mighty is our God. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. No. Let me 
to hear you say it. That sounds real good. One more time. Great and mighty is our God's name. Everybody, come on. Oh, and say great and mighty is our God's name. Great and mighty is our God's Nobody like the Lord. 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 No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. But high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. glory right there. We call them holy. We call them faithful. We call them righteous. We call them awesome. We call them all that. Hallelujah. glad you serve a great and mighty God. Give him a praise in this house. That sound like you, you serve yourself. I said, if you're glad you serve a great and mighty God, give him some glory in this house. If he's been good to you and you appreciate it, you ought to show him this morning. Lord, I appreciate you. I'm going to praise you. Hallelujah. Because you're a great and mighty God. There's none like you in heaven or in earth. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, we do serve a great and mighty God. And I'm just glad I'm in the number. Could have been another way. Could have looked right over me. But before I was even born, before I took my first breath, he saw me in the beginning and called my name. Anybody glad he called your name? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a word from the Lord in the house this morning. Uh, we do count it an honor to uh, be before you today, amen, on this uh, Sunday morning. We don't count it, amen, a small, amen, feat. It's actually a personal milestone, amen, to be before you. So we do appreciate the Lord, amen, for his goodness and uh, even laying it on the heart of our pastor, amen, to uh, have us come up. Um, in Jesus' name, thank God for you. Um, I am... Um, an ordained elder out of a uh, organization um, that I was in for about six or seven years. Um, but I was filled with the Holy Ghost in, uh, while uh, in Cool JC. And now that the Lord has sent me back, I count it an honor to go through the process. Amen. In Cool JC. In Jesus' name. Uh, so that's why you. Uh, see me going through this process here in Jesus name, but we do thank God for you. We do thank God for um, all of those in attendance um, Especially got to say uh, thank God for my wife. Amen in Jesus name, amen. In Jesus 
and thank God for her. I truly believe, and it ain't no cliche, that I got the best uh, one on this side of heaven. Amen? In Jesus' name. <laughs> thank God for her. We thank God for all of the uh, ministerial staff, deacons, mothers. Amen. Protocol has already been established. And all I got is 15 minutes, which that ain't start yet, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to go ahead and um, give you the word of the Lord. There are a few scriptures that I want to uh, come from. Amen. Uh, two main scriptures, um, and I'll give them to you now. Second Thessalonians 2, 6 through 8, and amen. Psalms 103, 8 through 14. Uh, if you want to follow along, those are the two main scriptures, but there are a few um, background scriptures that um, support, amen, the message from this morning. And as I read the scriptures, I want you to uh, listen closely, amen. Really consider uh, what's being said, amen, in Jesus' name, uh, because the Lord has something that he wants to say to you, amen, in Jesus' name. Uh, if you will stand, go before the Lord, the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before uh, these here, your people. Thank you, Lord God, for trusting us to bring forth your word. You said that we are stewards of mysteries and that you reveal your word unto us. So now, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you move me out of the way, that you speak a word in this house. You know who is gathered here. You know who is listening. Hallelujah. You know what they need to hear. So, Father, we pray right now that you speak to their heart. Feed your sheep. Send the anointing that destroys yokes. Satan, you are defeated, and we rebuke you right now. Hallelujah. We look and expect to hear from God, and that we will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Um, our first scripture is going to come from Hebrews 3, amen, and 7 through 13. In Jesus' name. Amen. And it reads on this wise. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the uh, provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest in any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58. And it reads, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And one of our main scriptures this morning. 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 through 8. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth 
and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Our last scripture, I know you're tired of standing, amen. Psalms 103, verse 8 through 14. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pity of his children, so the Lord pity of them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. I still love you. I still love you. And as you take your seat, our subtalk for this morning is you are not guilty. Amen. I still love you, and you are not guilty. Amen. We thank God again for the uh, opportunity this morning. Um, I don't have to go uh, deeply into just how much sin has abounded in the day that we live in. Um, of course, sin has always been our number one enemy from the day that Adam fell to this very moment in time. However, the Bible explains that uh, as time goes on, the generations uh, get wickeder and wiser. Amen. And the Bible explains that sin will abound, or as sin abounds, grace will abound the more. Amen. However, there is a mystery, there is a hidden truth, a hidden understanding of what takes place or what's going on with sin and iniquity. Amen. It's more than what meets the eye, if you will. Uh, there are uh, things, motions at work, amen, with the mystery of iniquity, amen. Uh, as things continually to get worse, amen, as sin becomes more accessible, amen, and as uh, unrighteousness begins to grow, the Bible explains that that is one of the main signs that that wicked one is coming on the scene. And Paul explains in this letter that I would not that you be afraid of those that are saying that the Lord is returning. For the Lord shall not return until that wicked one be revealed. Then he goes on to explain that the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Amen. Already in place. We know Amen. Throughout other scriptures that uh, other names th that this individual is being called by, it's the abomination of desolation, the one that spreads desolations as he works. Amen. And so when we look at the current atmosphere that we live in, and we see how wicked things are when so many individuals are killing their children and so many children are killing their parents see a man how homosexuality is now uh, accepted as if it's normal when we see all that's going on in this current atmosphere it is only a testament to what god has already spoken of it's a testament to the mystery of iniquity unfolding right before our eyes. One thing that we have to understand and to uh, be mindful of is that we don't get caught up in the mystery, my Lord Jesus. 
have to, amen, be mindful that although we all struggle from the last person to receive the Holy Ghost to the oldest, we all struggle. We all have, a, we have this war in our members. We all have to fight sin on a daily basis. Nobody is exempt from this fight, but we have to understand that what sin is and what it is doing. Amen. Because in this mystery, it is called sin causes a man one to become void and desolate of the presence of the Lord. Sin causes you to not have a spiritual mind. We understand that the scripture says that a carnal mind is enmity. Amen. It's against God. It's God's enemy. It's not subject to the laws of God. Neither indeed can be. Therefore, if you find yourself giving in to sin and unrighteousness, you're allowing the mystery to unfold in your life. You have to be careful that you don't allow yourself to be swept away with iniquity. We understand that, amen, it might be something that we have to fight against. We have to, amen, die daily, we have to do what we have to do, but we can't get so comfortable that we allow it, amen, to deceive us. Amen. That's why, amen, the writer of Hebrew begins to explain here that the, the, they were hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So many times, amen, you have to realize what that word entails. When something is, amen, being deceived or something is being deceitful, amen, it is, it is uh, acting in a way that is attempting to blind you, amen. It's, it's, it's attempting to not allow you to know what's going on. Sometimes when we find ourselves in sin, we don't even realize just how far, amen, we are. We don't realize, amen, just how much this thing is causing us problems in our lives. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is a revealer of the truth. And he wants you to realize and, and even to see this morning just how things are. Many times, amen, Paul would say, I, I would not have you ignorant, amen, that I would not have you in a place of being unknown. So I want to reveal to you this morning that the thing that calls God, amen, to swear in his wrath against his chosen that they won't enter into his rest is, amen, the sin that was at the root of it. Amen. Unbelief enters, amen, your heart whenever you find yourself, amen, wallowing in sin. You have to be careful. You have to, amen, guard your heart with all diligence because as the scripture says, out of it flows the issues of life. The enemy, amen, knows this and therefore he's a man seeking whom he may devour he's seeking whom he may introduce sin and and keep you into a place but thank be to god that we have the victory this morning sin might a man be a man disgusting it might be abominable it might causes you to be hardened may cause his unbelief to enter into your heart may have caused god to swear in his wrath amen but god sent an answer Amen, amen, over 4,000 years ago when he said, worthy is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He already saw what was going to take place. He already knew, amen, just how bad things was going to get, and he already sent the answer. So I want to ask you this morning, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the enemy and, amen, the sin that he's trying to keep you bound under, or are you going to believe that Jesus sent a word on your behalf, amen, that brought you out? Are you going to believe that Jesus is the way out, amen, that Jesus is the truth and the life, amen, to God? So we find ourselves in this predicament, and if you really look at what it is that's causing, amen, what is going on in this current atmosphere with so many churches, amen, going through what they're going through, at the root of it is this issue. At the root of it is sin running rapid. So many people, amen, as even what was preached earlier, are attempting to move about, amen, in spiritual places, oh God, by fleshly means. And that's because they're not conquering the sin in their life. They're 
not, amen, allowing the Lord to pull them up and to keep them on their feet, amen. But you have to realize, and this is why I love how God good is, how good God is, is that, amen, even right now, you can get on your feet. E even right now, you can turn around from what you've been going through. Even right now in this moment, if you're one of them that, amen, may have fallen victim to the iniquity in your life, you have the path to get right this morning. You have the path, amen, to get back on the path of righteousness. And God is telling you, because I only got 15 minutes and I got to fast forward it a, a bit, but God is telling you that I still love you in the place you are. Yes, I seen the sin that you committed. Yes, I seen the iniquity that you did, but I didn't remove my love off your life. As a matter of fact, when I was on the cross, I seen you committing the sins, but I didn't allow it to cause me to come down. As a matter of fact, I said, hit me again. Oh God, there's a sin that has to be forgiven. I told him, amen, to, to open my flesh a little more. There's some more blood that has to come out. There's some more blood that has to wash away all of these sins I'm seeing. I know you're going through, but don't let the sin deceive you. Get up on your feet. Get up, amen, and let God know that I'm not going to stop where I am. I'm going to get up and get back on the path of righteousness. This is the day that the Lord has made. You might as well rejoice and be glad in it. Why am I rejoicing? Because he gave me another chance. Why am I rejoicing? Because he picked me up from my dark place. Anybody ever been in a horrible pit? You know just how much sin can put you in a horrible pit. It can have your mind all bound up, but God is saying that don't matter. Sin is not stronger than the Holy Ghost. Sin is not stronger than my word. My word came to put to death sin, and it's going to raise up one day and say to sin and death, oh death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Grave, because all of those that was bound by death are now going to rise up and walk. Now all of them who went to sleep in me is going to rise up and walk with me. They're going to reign with me. Anybody want to reign with the Lord? You got to let this enemy know that I'm not going to stop in this path. I'm not going to give up because God still loves me. Aren't you glad he loves you today? Because he loves you, he took your place where you should have died. Because he loves you, when you committed the sin you committed and the, the, the verdict should have been announced over your life that you are guilty. God took your place and says no matter what you did, I forgive you. All you got to do is confess and turn away from all of your wickedness. If I were you this morning, I'll make up in my mind, I'll set it in my heart that I'm not going to leave the same way I came. I'm not going to allow this sin to keep me down. Not when I got all this power in my vessel. Not when I got all this power in the blood of God. Somebody this morning, you don't have to stay where you are. You can get up right now. You can rejoice and walk in the newness of life right now. You don't have to pay the price. You are not guilty. God already paid it. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to die. You can live. Somebody say, I want to live today. I'm not going out of here without getting my life back. I'm getting my life. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to praise God the way I praise him when I receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to praise God the way I praise him when he pours into 
to me new life. I'm going to praise God with all my heart. Is there anybody in here that's going to declare right now, no matter what I've been through, no matter what I face, I'm going to praise God because he didn't have to die for me. He didn't have to pave the way for me to, amen, inherit eternal life. Is anybody going to let God know I'm grateful? I'm not one of those that's going to keep my mouth closed. I'm not one of those that's going to sit on my praise. I'm grateful. Yes, I am. I'm grateful. I said I'm grateful. And I love you. What you've done for me. I understand, Lord, who you are. That there's none like you in heaven or in earth. I understand, Lord, that you created this entire world. But for me, you emptied yourself. But for me, you set down your glory. But for me, you came in the, amen, the mode of a servant. And you took on my sins. And I understand that you did it for me. So as I go to my seat, let's get together and praise the God of our salvation. Let's get together and let God know and let the enemy know that, Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for dying on the cross. We thank you for not coming down. We thank you for remaining up there when you could have called a legion of angels. We thank you. We love you. We magnify you. I still love you. Jesus dropped the charges. 